Hey guys, what are five things that you would like to see from the Avatar The Last Airbender Netflix adaptation? As a massive fan of the original series, I've been asking myself this question for a couple days now, and I came up with a pretty interesting list, so let's dive in. What is up everyone, and welcome back to Jones Vibes. Hit the like button if you believe Aang can save the world, and let's dive in. So with a new adaptation of ATLA coming in February, I thought it might be a good time to talk about our expectations for the show. As massive fans of the original series, I feel like we we kind of have a right to have expectations, you know what I mean? And so here are the things that I am most curious about seeing from this show, and I'll just start with number one. I just want to see a faithful adaptation of the original series. I've talked several times on this channel about my experience watching the M. Night Shyamalan movie, and I'm not sure that I'm ever able to get across just how heartbreaking that experience was for me. Like, it's funny, you know, I got up, I left the theater, but like, I got up and left the theater like that's a big deal <laughs> that's how mad I was and so now we're turning to this new Netflix live action adaptation and truly most of what I've heard so far is that they're staying really really faithful to the source material here and so that makes me feel a lot better you know it's a new day we can kind of calm down and get excited for this I think as long as they honor the original series they're gonna succeed there are a lot of different factors that weigh into the conversation of why the original series is so great and what do I I mean by that. Basically, it has this way of getting serious like on a dime. The tone can completely shift and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a very, very serious conflict. There's a lot at stake in this show, but along with that, the very next episode can just be super lighthearted and warm and straight up hilarious at times. The cartoon appealed to kids as well as adults, and so I think zeroing in on that is a very, very important factor. But on to number two, I'm curious about the changes that will unfold undoubtedly be made because even if this show is true to the source material, it's for sure not going to be just a one-to-one. -one, you know what I mean? From what I heard and just doing the math, season one of this show is actually going to be longer than season one of the cartoon. And so that right there says that we're going to be getting more. Azula and Fire Lord Ozai are also said to have some screen time in this first season, whereas in the original, like they don't really show up. And so what is going to be changed and what is going to be added? Do you think that they'll take some liberties and add maybe some extra layers to some of these characters? Subplots that we haven't seen yet? I think honestly, you could add even more depth to Katara and Sokka. I mean, all the characters are important, but just some extra time with those two could be nice as well as Aang. But then moving on to the third thing I was thinking about, straight up, it was just the special effects. I am very excited to see some live action bending, some earth bending, Bending, fire bending, water bending, air bending, whatever the hell it is. Like, I'm just stoked to see it. This is actually a very lame story, and you can make fun of me all you want, but like, I hated the M. Night movie, right? But I used to turn down the volume of it all the way. I would just throw it on and then turn on some like EDM music and just kind of have it on in the background just to see some live action bending. Because although that movie was absolute trash, the bending still looked pretty sick. And I have a feeling that the bending in this show is just going to be out of control, man. Like, like, you can imagine at the Southern Air Temple when Aang gets triggered by all those memories and he goes into the Avatar state. Like, what's that gonna look like? And then staying on the topic of effects like CGI versus practical. How heavy are they gonna lean into CGI? Like, Ko, for instance, the face stealer specifically. Like, I'm very much hoping for that to be practical. It needs to be scary, and although CGI can look real... Sometimes it just doesn't really do the trick in those moments. Think of it this way. The original Jurassic Park, some of those scenes with the T-Rex, it being practical, it was so shocking and scary versus some of the modern day Jurassic World movies. You have this big CGI T-Rex and it's like, oh no, it's kind of scary. But that original, like nothing touches that. And so I'm just hoping that there are some practical sets as well as practical creatures. And it's all not just like a CGI wash. But on to number four, and this is probably the most important, Appa and Momo. I talked about this in my shot for shot breakdown, but those two are full on characters characters in this show and they need to be treated as such. They have story arcs and they're as much a part of the group as everyone else. But how do you translate that into live action? Like what is the Sokka and Momo relationship really gonna look like? Appa and Momo are just the absolute best and judging from the trailers they look great. Appa specifically is just insane to look at in live action and gosh 
I wish that I had a Sky Bison. But he's so important to Aang's story. Everything that they've been through together. And I'm just, I'm really looking for that relationship to be highlighted, like, a lot. Like I said, they're animals, yes. But they're just as important to the story as everyone else. And for the people who might be watching this for the first time and haven't seen the original, you really want them to connect with those two because that's what separates this show from so many others. There's so much heart. But then lastly, and this is just something that always hits close to home for me, number five is the music. It's being composed by, excuse my pronunciation here, but Takashi Furukawa. And although he said they'll be using quite a bit of the original score from the original show, I'm very much looking for a new flair to the sound. Something that makes it feel live action. Something that makes it feel bigger. This guy doesn't have much history. I looked him up. Um, he worked on Star Wars, the Clone Wars movie, but they clearly have a lot of faith in him and music is half the battle. If you miss with the music, the whole ship sinks. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much what I've been thinking about so far with this show, but I'd love to hear from you. If you're a fan of the original series, what are you looking for out of this live action adaptation? Is there anything specific or are you just kind of looking for a great show? Please let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get all of your guys' different perspectives. Also, if you're new here, I do want to let you know that I will be covering in full the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender. So Make sure to subscribe and keep checking back. There's going to be a lot of content to come. Also, hit the like button if you could. I'd really appreciate that. It means more than you know. You can follow me on X at Jones Vibes Only. And guys, don't forget to keep up the good vibes, man. But Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender is almost here, and I'm excited. I'm excited.